Good day, everyone. So good to be back with you reviewing another new product. And today's featured product is going to be Sanctum by Oaken Lab. So Oaken Lab themselves have been around for a couple of years. They're not new, but what I'm going to be presenting to you today is brand new. So Christopher Kerrigan is the owner proprietor of Oaken Lab. If you get the chance to engage with him in the community, please do so. He is a swell guy. Very sophisticated, very passionate, very skilled at what he does and has a couple other hobbies that kind of jive well with this hobby. And I'll tell you what I mean in a second. So take a look at this one more time. The artwork, the kind of the deco, I would call it art deco type of a presentation on the label. It is waterproof, very nice. So Christopher is also adept in photography and I think that comes across in his labels. I don't know if he actually takes these shots, but I would imagine that he does. And what's unique about this soap is it is the brand new V3 base. Now I do need to, to take the time to provide you a little bit of a confessional. I have not until this day ever tried Oak and Lab soaps and that's not been deliberate. I've just been on my own excursion. I get an influx of stuff. I kind of get drawn, uh, you know, carrot waved here, carrot waved there. And you try all these different things and I've heard really great things about Oaken. I've known Chris for a couple of years, uh, came up to him the other day uh, in one of the shape groups and said, hey, you know what? I'd love to try your product. I think I'm gonna place an order. And he said, just wait, I've got a new formula coming out. And that's what this is. This is the V3 formulation, enhanced slickness, enhanced density, enhanced scent strength. So he's re-releasing it in his individual three, the original three that came out for Oaken Lab. Those are the ones that are gonna get the V3. He'll probably build on that, but I just wanted to kind of throw that out there for you. So I'm excited that as I come into my first go with Oaken Lab, that it's his brand new V3 formula. So I'm excited about that. A couple things, this is a sandalwood scent and I got a couple things here I wanna share with you. So this is a sandalwood and rose forward with bergamot, jasmine, cedarwood, benzoin, and a few other scent notes within it. The other thing I wanna share with you as it relates to this base, it's got added shea butter, it's got added lanolin, and it's got yogurt, allantin, vitamin E, tamanu oil, and locally grown cold pressed tree nut oil with immense skin conditioning benefits. No way I was ever gonna remember all that unless I was being paid to memorize a script for a movie, no way. And so that's what it is, really sophisticated stuff. And that seems to be the standard today as it relates to soap making. It's all about getting those fresh skin nourishing properties blended in in mass in these little containers. I don't know how they do it, but they do it. And it's quite extraordinary. We benefit from it as consumers. Anyways, I'm gonna get the shave going. That's kind of a little background. Um, Chris, if you, if you ever get the chance to engage with him, like I said, he's adept with photography, seems to really be into art as well, and that was the inspiration behind Sanctum. So Sanctum kind of was designed to, to kind of invoke memories of being in an art museum and kind of the solace that he experiences there. And it's clear when you look at a lot of his labels that that's what's important to Chris. That's just what he does, that's who he is. Everybody's into different things. And I like how he kind of blends all those elements together, all of his hobbies, all of his skills, they all seem to come together in this one thing. That's pretty cool to me. So I like that. I love passionate and inspired individuals. I don't really like stories when people just, well, I just kind of got into it, you know. I love these folks that really get into this for specific reasons. And he wanted to kind of improve on men's grooming, on the daily ritual, the daily routine, the daily rigmarole of what we go through as, as wet shavers. And he wanted to kind of take that, improve on it, amplify it, and it's all compressed into this little tub. There you go. So I've got a lot of growth for you today. It's really itching my face. So the review worked out quite well, but I do want to share with you something else. While well, I'm smearing this all on my face, take a look at the cap, take a look at the label. This is kind of like a black painted metal tin, really nice, polished. There's nothing light or faded about it. It's complete dark onyx, really well done. The presentation on this soap is amazing. And that's another thing that's really kind of upticked these years uh, recently has been presentation, really what they're offering to you. So it's eye candy. It's not just kind of old tubs that are thrown together. Everybody's, their labels, the containers that they use, the themes that they use, everything seems to be top notch these days. And these are no exception. The other thing I like 
is you've got this apothecary type staining here on the bottom, the bottom um, portion of the tub. What's cool about it though, is it's not your typical apothecary bottom. I've seen containers like this in the past, but this one has sharper edges on it. It's not rounded. The other ones seem to be a little dingy. This one's very clear and clean and it has the oaken insignia right here. I love that. I love it so much. So anyway, cool stuff. Things like that are really important to me. They really pop for me and they add to the experience for me. So I dig it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add some of this residual. I tried to be clean with it like Ross does. I'm getting better with it. I'm still not good at it though. I'm getting better at being mediocre. So according to my peers and good friends in the wet shaving community, I am going to be floored by this soap base. And there's been a lot of that going on lately. Um, as I've been doing these videos the past couple of years and as I've kind of finishing up my fifth year in the hobby, I am just shocked by how, you know, I've been using soap bases for so long. And I remember last year, two years ago thinking, I don't just, I just don't see how it can be any better than this. And every single time I try something different, to try something new, last time it was Zingari Man, blown away by that. Um, all the improvements that some of our mainstay artisans have made to their soap bases, people like Holy Cow, people like Oaken, people like Bear Stern Man, it's like, where does it end? It just doesn't. So it continues to push me down the rabbit hole deeper and deeper. And there we are. So today I've got my Milton. This is a custom, this is a 28 millimeter tip knot and it's a fan. There's Milton's little coin there. Pretty awesome stuff. Now this is gonna need a lot of water and that's because the brush has been sitting for a little bit of time. Preloaded it. I gave you the scent notes. The sandalwood is very, very apparent in this. This is a very strong masculine sandalwood. So if you're into sandalwood, you'll really like this. It's not quite as piercing as like a, an art of shaving to me is probably the most pronounced sandalwood that I can think of out there. There's probably some other ones, but every time I think of that, I think of them. And then kind of the copycat of that is find accoutrements, Santel Absolute. It's the same exact thing pretty much. But this one is more subdued and the other blended notes that I read off to you really kind of suppress the power of the sandalwood. So sandalwood can be very nose piercing. And this one is just right. It's very subtle, very pleasant, but it's got that masculine kind of tone to it where it can be a cologne. And when we get to the splash, I'll talk about that in a second. But he did it in such a way in that it would be the type of scent that you can wear in a formal setting, in a business setting, in any type of setting really. But if you just want to smell good and smell like you have cologne on or something like that, this does that for you. It provides it. But yeah, this is without a doubt, sand, like I said, sandalwood forward. So there you go. So I'm gonna add some more water. Because it needs it a lot. So Abraham told me, he said, look, when you get this thing, smell it off the tub, which I did. And then he says, just wait till you start lathering it. And he was right. He said that the scent would really start to come to life as you start to lather it. And I like that. Sometimes that happens with soap. Sometimes it doesn't. And so you can't expect that every single time. And this is one of those soaps where the story continues to expand, continues to get better as you move forward with it. This is good stuff and I can tell it's thirsty. Very creamy and it's got that nice sheen that you expect to get with traditional bases that are improved or enhanced and with the newer bases. It's like that glossiness, like a mirror type of effect. You're getting that with the base. Now, I wanna look and see because there's one thing I forgot to check. Yes, it's beef tallow and yogurt. So I've noticed too when you mix animal fat with dairy, duck fat, 
goat milk, yogurt, anything like that, you're going to get some really spectacular results. And this is giving you that. Yeah, this is super thirsty. So that's one thing. So I talked about differentials and usually I'll find sometimes just depending on how it's done. Now this base is coming together quite quickly, but still not where it needs to be from a hydration perspective. But it is creamy and rich and that yogurt effect is very apparent in the soap. Very, very nice. Look at this stuff. Now I'm adding folks, a ton. I'm like, I'm dousing this in water and it's still taking a ton. So the soap is very malleable. You can customize it. Some soaps, and when I say that, I'm saying that to say there are some soaps where you add a certain percentage of water and you get what you get. You're not going up or down. You're getting right where you're going to be right there at that moment. Some of these soaps though, you can add water, add water, add water, add water. Some of you folks want to stop at a certain point, but there's some folks like Jack, for example, you watch him on the Daily Shave, he can add a tremendous amount of water. He gets soaps to do things that nobody else can do. Uh, I think that's pretty great. And some folks will go the distance with these things, but this is a soap where you can do that. You can add a ton of water. So there's different forms of tallow. Some soap companies will call out the fact that it's a beef tallow. We're seeing all kinds of fats now from different animals appearing on the scene. And if you watch some of my videos from last year, I make a lot of jokes about the different types of fats and the fats that would appear. And it was designed to be sarcastic, not so much anymore. I think I was right on because there's a lot of interesting stuff coming. I saw bear fat the other day. I mean, just a bunch of stuff. As long as it's improving the soap, I'm good with it. So I didn't want to lather this long. And for you folks in YouTube land, it's not that I intentionally want to lather for seven minutes or five minutes or whatever the time frame may be. Obviously I slow down and talk a lot and make specific points because I'm doing a review. But some of these soaps just are that much fun to play with. And this one is no except, look at that, oh my gosh. Now I'm just painting on at this point. But I want you folks to see, look at that. It's not even getting overhydrated. It's not getting diluted at all. I always worry about that when I add a lot of water to soaps, especially with a badger knot, because badger seems to contain hydration at a higher percentage than synthetic or boar. But this one, I just love. This is great. This has a different, so, in comparison to my last review, Zingari Man, which is another wonderful base, it's just different. This one has that nice beef tallow sheen that you get from soaps like Sterling and others that use beef tallow. It's almost like a mirror effect. I love it. And then you add that yogurt in there and it looks like you've got yogurt on your face. Okay, so this can go further, but it's pretty well hydrated now. And I'm gonna go with that. Look at that, OMG, good stuff. Sheesh, I don't even want to waste it. So I was feeling nostalgic today. I don't know why. So I pulled this baby out. I haven't used this in probably since 2017. I was gonna say two years, but since 2017, which would make it almost three years. This is my black West Coast shaving open comb. It's got a Wisamet blade. Now, some of you folks asked me about that on the last review, so I'll talk a little bit about that in a second, but it's got my favorite blade right now, which is the Wisdomit. It was the Astro Green. The Astro Green's probably pretty close to being as good as this blade. The problem with these blades is they're a lot more difficult to get your hands on. So it's got a very hefty handle, it's all black, and I just felt like, you know what, I wanna shave with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. 
and hope my technique is good because this is a little bit more aggressive of a razor. And you guys know I don't like aggressive razors. The soap is protecting me quite a bit. That I can see. I can feel it. And I'm not getting as much blade feel on this as I would be accustomed to. Again, open combs usually have a little bit more blade feel. They give you that extra exposure, that little extra percentage of efficiency. And they're usually a little bit more aggressive. I can't say they're a lot more aggressive, but they're a little bit more. But the soap is being my bodyguard right now. Because a lot of what you're looking for too is a partnership. And I'm not trying to get philosophical on you, but there is a harmony. There's a harmonious element between a good razor and a good blade. And there are razors that can really decrease the quality of a blade, a good blade. And there's razors that can increase the quality or bring out the best of the blade. And you wanna figure out what those partnerships are as you go along. Many of you in the hobby have already figured that out. Usually it's process of elimination. But I could tell that this would be a little bit more of an abrasive shave for me were it not for the soap base. Yeah, this would be harsh. Now, it's just me being a wimp. I don't like it. But there are some guys that love that scrapey feeling. All right. Let's move along here. This stuff, guys, is super creamy. So every bit as good as Zingari Man and vice versa, but in a different way. And I like that. I like that variety. Sometimes you're just in the mood for a different soap base. You don't want every soap base. I got a bunch of lather all over my shirt. You don't want every soap base to give you the same thing. Otherwise, what's the point? So I love how all of these artisans bring their backgrounds, bring their skills, bring their intelligence all together to make different things, to make one really good thing in different ways. It's why we have multiple places that make burgers. They're all the same concept, but different ways. And I love that. All right, let's keep this going. This brush is a monster. I love the size. This knot is exceptional. It's so nice to, when I think back, I've been reminiscing a lot lately. When I think back five years ago and what was available and what was considered the cat's meow at the time, it's just not anymore. And badger knots were just not like this. This densely packed, this efficient, um, and offer you this kind of dispensation where it's really just kind of dispersing the lather the way that you want it. Badger has typically had the reputation of being lather hoggish. Shout out to lather hog, by the way. I love that he's on this channel too. Good reviews. See lather hog, I didn't call it lather hogs because I know that you've got a trademark on that name and I didn't want to infringe on anything. Still have some wherewithal while I'm doing this. Yeah, this razor. It's a little bit more aggressive than I'd like it to be. But I have found that the overwhelming consensus is that I, if I polled 10 guys in the group, probably six or seven, I mean in the community, Six or seven of them would probably say they preferred mid to aggressive razors. So I'm the one weirdo that likes the B plate on Carve and the two or three plate on our two and four on, um, what's the other one? Rockwell. So Oh yeah. Yeah, this is brutal. But again, protected and saved by the soap.
This razor is very abrasive for me. And I'm being light as a feather with it. But on the plus side, it's very efficient. It's mowing down a lot of growth in a very short amount of time with less strokes. Residual slickness on this, amazing. Again, very good in a different way. This is excellent stuff. I'm definitely gonna be getting more oak. I can't say that while my wife's in the room, but I'm definitely gonna be getting more oaken. This is amazing, amazing stuff. Even with how abrasive that razor is, I'm enjoying the shave. Normally, just knowing me and my OCD, all I would be able to think about is how abrasive that razor is and how I don't like it. But, and again, it's not manufacturing or any kind of defect with the razor. It's just more aggressive than I like it to be. And that's just not my forte. But the soap is kind of helping me overcome that. It's a crutch for me <laughs> of sorts. I don't know, I'm not gonna do against the grain because this is gonna tear me to shreds. Well, I'm gonna go ahead for my cleanup here. So if you're new and seeing me for the first time, I normally have three passes with a fourth subsequent cleanup pass. And I'm moving right along to that. So like I said, this razor has got me smoother faster. And it's almost got me thinking that I need to really master the art of aggressive razors so that I can shave faster. But yeah, it's mowing stuff down very efficiently. So it's doing what it's designed to do. This is really one of those, let the rate of the razor do the work. This is my problem here. So this is where I kind of hone in and get quiet because my must, if I'm gonna cut myself badly, it's gonna be in my mustache area. Because it's where I have the oddest hair growth, where it's kind of going in different directions. It's a little more difficult for me to get to certain areas at the right angle, especially with a razor like this. Oh. We got a June bug in here. Well, that's smooth still. <laughs> I was nervous right there. I really was. No cuts, good shave. And that residual slickness is still there. Like you can just feel it. So if you've never had, or you're new at this, you know, most of you guys that have tried contemporary soap bases know what I'm talking about, but when you're washing your face off and you keep adding water and you still feel that glide all over your face, that's residual slickness and Oaken provides a lot of that. So again, from a cushion perspective, the soap made my shave better. So kudos to you, Chris Kerrigan, you actually made a bad experience better by your soap, by virtue of your soap base. So that's cool. I like that because that would have been, it was a very abrasive razor, but again, a lot of sauce was taken off by that soap base. I can still feel that residual slickness. And because of that excess glide, I didn't cut myself. And I think if I used another soap that wasn't as dense, again, this is the V3, so it's increased density. If I didn't have that, I'd have cuts all over my face right now. But this soap protected. So again, two years ago, I thought, eh, you know, soap is soap, density is density. Everybody has it. But over this past year, I've really had my mind changed about a lot of the different elements of our hobby. There are ingredients that can be amplified 
and do things that are typically uncharacteristic of traditional soap bases. And this is one of those. This thing really took, so this to me, if however we're editing this video later on, Abe, this is something to me that should stand out because this is a, an example of a premium product that had changed and altered the state of my shave. This literally, so remember I talked about last week, I didn't want to levitate. This time I actually almost do. This one actually took an abrasive scenario and improved it because again, and I had no intention of doing that. I just hadn't visited that razor in a while. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and give it a shot. I came across it today. And just to see if my technique over the last few years has improved. And I'm telling you, I would have cut myself were it not for the V3. So kudos to Chris, great formulation. I've gotten water on the label. No qualms, no issues, there we go. And now I'm gonna bring up something also very important. So splashes are a little finicky in transport. And so Chris went with this really cool cap that has like this bulky bottom lip here and it attaches here, but it's designed so that there's no leakage. And I think that's cool. It's got this apothecary staining on it. And again, the soap base is very strong. Sandalwood's very pronounced. It's gonna kick you right in the face. And then this is gonna come in and make everything better. And what I mean by that is you're gonna get that nice scent. You're gonna get that sandalwood. It's gonna be fun during the shave. And then this is gonna be your finishing application. This is going to be your cologne right here. Very nice. It's not intense at all. It's skin nourishing, very hydrating. My face feels good. No tightness. And that scent is so nice. You guys have to smell this. It's almost like a, an aquatic sandalwood. I'm getting that from the splash. It's really a nice blend, really, really. Sandalwood to me, I like sandalwood and I have a lot of sandalwood in there in all different varying degrees. But this one is unique, very, very unique. Different than any other sandalwood I've smelled. You guys have to, if you haven't smelled it already, you gotta smell this. So I'm looking at this here. I'm not seeing any alcohol in this. So there's a lot of witch hazel, aloe, a lot of skin nourishing properties in here. So it is alcohol free and that's cool with me. So I used to be a big alcohol addict as a kid related to this. And over time it's become again, one of those things that's just, it's gotta be done the right way so that it's invigorating and not overly intense. And so this stuff with the properties that he's injected, make it worthwhile. This is really good stuff. So anyway, that's my two cents, guys. Thank you for having me. I tried to make a 20 minute video. It was 27 minutes, but I had a lot to say about this. So again, you guys can fast forward. That's the beauty of YouTube is you can move all around. This is Sanctum in the V3 formula by Oaken Labs. When you get a chance on my behalf, give a thumbs up to Chris Kerrigan for a wonderful creation. Do yourself a favor and pick this up. It's available at West Coast Shaving. God bless you guys. I'll see you next time.